everybody, it is your boy Twin Plays here, back in our video. I hope you guys are doing amazing. So, I know some of you guys may be a little confused, maybe not. Um, I am dressed in my pajamas. It is a Sunday morning. Um, it is the 1st of May, and we are at 20,400 subscribers right now. And um, I know this video is being posted later in June because I am on vacation right now. So yeah, um, if you're new to my channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button and turn on that post notifications. It means so much to me, everybody. Um, and also while you're at it, maybe join the Discord because we do help out a lot of people that need help with like building, scripting, anything like that, and things like the videos. Um, but welcome everybody. So I know... Yes, yeah, so I did pre-record this video, so hello everyone, um, a month later, I am in Greece right now on a vacation, so, yep, <laughs> um, but, yeah, so this video is gonna be a lot of fun, I know you guys have been waiting for this one, this is the, this is the Bloxican Morph Button um, tutorial, now, there's a lot we're gonna be talking about today, so feel free to just watch the whole thing, or um, skip to the turn certain timestamps, and you'll um, know really what to watch, now, um, in the description, you're going to go to the model, and you're going to be grabbing this right here. Now, in this video, we're going to be doing the mox block skin morph button, and the next video, we're going to be doing the block skin command, which is a little bit more different, not as much harder, but pretty simple. So, just grab this model right here. You can click download or click claim, and it should say item owned, and you'll be able to um, basically import this into your studio. So, um, to import this into your studio, you are going to go to Toolbox, and you are going to be... Oh, whoa, and they got a new Toolbox. Wow, I didn't even see that. That is very, very cool. Holy crap. So, you're going to go to Inventory, and you're going to My Models, and you're going to import it right here. So, we are going to import the Blockskin Morph button. Don't worry about that. Um, and we are going to grab everything in general. So, you are going to open this up. Oh. I did not mean to rename it. This is a folder in Workspace. Um, when you read it, of course, it just says this was all developed by me and where you should ungroup it. Now, feel free to delete that. You're gonna ungroup this in Replicated Storage, so bring this down here and you wanna group this in Workspace. Feel free to delete that and then click right click and hit that right there and ungroup. So we have a few things. I'm gonna grab the statue, bring this all the way over to here real quick, sorry. Let me um, bring this over here so you guys can see what's going on. Bada beam, bada boom, and there we go. All right, so we have the statue right here. Now, the hair's a little messed up, but don't worry about that. Um, but yeah, so this was in Dora's Hangout. I know you guys might know that. Um, but um, we're going to talk about this stuff really quickly, and I'll kind of explain it to you. You know what? Actually, we're going to grab this block skin as well, because this is also going to be very important to show you what's like, how this works, what I did, and how I created this. Now, this did take me a while, but I did it. So, um, basically, we have a model right here called block skin. And we are going to be putting this in replicated storage because this is the template we're going to be using to use our custom character. We have body colors, pants, shirt, humanoid, and then we have this value called yes. Um, you can use this in the future if some of you guys want to understand and know how to make block skin dances, um, which we'll talk about later. But um, this is pretty cool. So yes, uh, this is needed in here. Um, you can get rid of it if you want to. You don't need to worry. It's not part of anything in the scripts that we have right now. We have an animate script, and then we have all the default R6 stuff. So, um, talking about all of this, we are actually going to get straight into this because we are going to want to upload and create animations for this in order to work. Um, so, we have a jump sound, an idle animation, a jump uh, animation, and a walk animation. In order for this to work, you're going to need to get your own animations. To get your own animations, you can do a few things. You can either create them from yourself, or you can go into Toolbox and do the easiest thing and search up R6 Jump. So, you can search up a lot of things. I got some like custom ones or like cartoon ones, and it's going to be pretty simple. So, if you click right here, this is R6, by the way. We're not using R15. You got to make sure it's R6. You're going to go right here. You're going to go to Animations. You're going to click it. And we hit play. Okay, this is like um, animation like this. Now, my jump, you'll just be able to find it. I did find it in here. Um, I'm pretty sure it was just like um cartoon kind of jump, basically. But, yeah, so you're going to want to make sure it's like that. You're going to make sure it's not on loop because you don't want that. And you're going to click this right here. You're going to hit um, set animation priority. And you're going to make sure it's either core or action or something like that. Um, I would recommend either action. Don't do idle because we will do idle for the idle one. And you're going to hit publish to Roblox. Once you hit publish, you're going to hit submit. And it's going to give you a nine number ID. So um, actually, I'll just do it because why not? It's going to give you this right here. So you're going to click that. You're going to copy that number. 
And what you're going to do, and you can just delete this later, is you're going to put this in the jump animation ID right here. So you're gonna repeat that, and you're gonna do that for idle and walk. So it's actually kind of simple, not too hard actually. So R6 jump, um, you can, I mean R6, you know, idle. Uh, I don't know how I found it, but it was pretty nice, and these are all really nice. Um, and you just keep doing the same thing. Now that plugin was the animation editor, pretty nice. And it gets pretty simple from there. Um, and yeah, so pesos in there, and then we'll talk about the script in a second here. But um, another thing you guys can do for this template is you can create your own like prop holding animations. Um, you can create your own thing. So that's what I'm trying to say. So if you were to click this, hit create, and create your own animations, it's it's super simple. So um, heading into the script, it's a little hard, but not too hard. Um, I had a problem where the player was jumping and then the animation would play and it just would get so crazy and this took me a while to figure out but I got it to figure it out. So basically what we have here is run service and we have the character which is script.parent so it locks in. We have the humanoid, the jump sound, the walk animation, idle animation, and jump animation. So we grab those animations, we load it onto the animator. Once we load it onto the animator, we set the priority to action, idle, and movement. So these are animation priorities that are already be set, so you don't need to worry. Um, but then right here, item animation. So we're gonna be playing this. The reason we're playing idle animation uh, infinitely is because um, that's what is gonna be played the whole time. You know, they're just gonna be sitting still until they jump or anything like that. So basically, what's gonna happen is um, we have this local function called move. Um, this is when I was talking about recently in my last few videos about um, functions. This is the local one and we're doing move. And if the humanoid direction, as in saying if you move and your magnitude is greater than zero, okay, so that just means if you move in general. If you're moving in general, what we're gonna do is we're gonna check if, if not walk animation is playing. So if we're not walking already and animal and idle animation is playing, then we're gonna stop idle animation and we're gonna play the walk one. So that means we're gonna stop idling and we're gonna walk. Else, if the walk is playing and not idle, then we're gonna play idle and stop the walk. So that's basically saying if we stop walking and then we basically um, are not an idle, we're gonna play idle. And the reason, so we have if, that means if we're not walking, I mean if, so this is right here. So if we're walking, we're playing walk animation. But if we're not walking, then we're gonna play the idle animation. Then we just have a simple humanoid jump. So if we jump, then we're gonna play the uh, jump animation track and the jump sound. Um, there is a little bit of an issue that if you hold down the space bar, the jump animation will like freeze and be weird and the jump sound will just play spamming. So you will need to fix that. Um, I mean, I'll try and fix that myself, but it's just, I have not had no clue how to fix it. But um, right here is the run service, render step connect move. So as in saying, anytime we step, um, it's going to check this function right here. So that's really nice. Um, and you will need to change this jump sound. I do have, actually, you don't need to change it, but um, with the new update, uh, sounds are all broken, so I'm a little pissed, but you know, that's how that works, you know? All right, so basically we're gonna hop into um, the Bloxican uh, statue part. So we're gonna put this in replicated storage again, and we're gonna talk about the statue. Now, it's honestly pretty simple. This part is easier than ever. So we have the welcome morph. Um, in here, you can actually just change the uh, the head part. There's a rank right above here. You go to frame and you can change this right here. You can mess with the colors. You can change the text, you know, whatever you want. Um, feel free to just mess with it. You know, it's all up to your choice. Um, and then we have a color handler, which basically makes this welcome change speed color. It's pretty nice. So um, talking about this one, there is an animation right here. This is the same thing we did, but what it's doing is it's playing a wave animation every 30 seconds. So nothing too crazy. I just added that. You don't have to have that, but I just added that because why not? Um, to customize this, it's pretty easy. Um, you just got to go to the pants and the shirt. Go to the shirt template and change the ID. Um, that's like if I were literally just to do that, it'd change it for you. But feel free to mess around with that. And um, for the hats, you will have to make sure um, you can just change the mesh right here and the mesh ID and texture ID. Um, you will have to make sure it is welded to the head. If it is not, it's uh, going to fly off. So you don't want that happening. But um, that's about it. Now we have the proximity prompt. So this is actually changing you from your character to the block can morph. This is the whole script. Now, where this is at is at the button, of course, and this proximity prompt, if you guys haven't learned about them yet, it has a few, like, a few properties where you can do action text, um, you can do gamepad uh, key code, hold duration, and like what number, become block skin. Don't really mess with that unless you want to and you know what you're doing. Um, but then right here, we have the main script. 
And um, in the next video, I'll explain how to use the command and how this will all basically work because this is the exact same script as the command version. So how this works, script.parent.proximity triggered. If this gets playered, we grab the player and we do a bunch of stuff. This is what took me a while to do, but I don't know how I did it and I figured it out, which was pretty crazy. I felt really nice that I figured it out. But we do a few things. So local body colors. We grab head color, left arm color, left leg color, right arm color, right leg color, and torso color. So this is the body colors as in saying um, your body colors and the block skin body colors. Then we grab accessories by making a table. And what we're doing right here is we get the block skin template in replicated storage. We get the new character by um, cloning that template. And what we're doing is right here for underscore accessory in pairs our character dot humanoid get accessories which is going to return all of the accessories we are going to do table dot insert accessories accessory clone so we are basically going to get all the accessories from my player from what i loaded in us and we are going to clone it um in general and put it in this table then we are going to check if uh, for an accessory, which we're creating a new variable accessory in pairs accessory. So in this table right here, we're checking what's going to be inside. And we're going to go the new character, which is a block skin template dot humanoid add accessory accessory. So a lot of accessories here, but we're basically adding hats to the block skin of what we have. Then we're going to do the color as in saying body colors equals the arc body colors equals the block skin colors. So block skin colors equals our colors. Sorry. And then we're doing the shirts and pants. So the same thing. So if shirt, new character shirt dot template equals shirt dot template, new character pants dot template equals pants dot template. So we're basically cloning literally everything onto the block skin. Now, I know some of you guys may be like, Twin, why didn't you use, um, I think it's called like humanoid load or like it's some, a load description, description, humanoid description. Um, I had problems with it. So that's why I had to do it from scratch. Um, humanoid description is basically literally grabbing everything instead of having to do all of this and it will just load the whole character but for some reason i was just having problems so now we do the same thing for a head and what we're doing here this is how i checked if they're headless if they have the mesh id of this which is headless then their head's going to be transparent but if they don't have a face then the face is going to be one and if they do have a face then the face texture is going to change the, uh, what the character had so i had to make sure of that because block as was not working but then i figured it out then we have the setting character, so humanoid rampart uh, anchor should not be true. Um, and then set primary part C frame, as in saying what we're doing going to do is right as they do the blocks can morph, it is literally going to um, just change them right in the morph. They're not going to go anywhere. They're just going to stay in the same spot. It's just going to change them. Then we have the player dot character equals new character, and then new character dot parent equals workspace. So we are basically setting ourselves to the new character, and we are setting that to workspace. All right. So we are loaded in right now, and as you can tell, we have the welcome, and it's changing colors, and we have our body parts. So remember how that block skin template looked kind of weird? Let's just show you what I mean. So I literally just hold E down, and now I literally have my full-on character onto this block skin. Um, one problem is the, ba the back accessories, for some reason, don't get smaller. I haven't figured that out. Um, I don't know if it's like a Roblox issue because the head and everything works. And then, you know, this is just a little weird. I'll have to figure that out. It's about the sizing. But um, as you can tell, I'm doing this really cool idle animation. And as I walk, it does this funny little cartoon animation, which I love. And then when I hit jump, it does the jump animation and perfectly everything like that. And as you can tell, it cancels it out, which is really nice. But this is what I mean when you hold down the jump button. That's the little issue. But so that's about it. I hope you guys really did enjoy this video. Um, I'm going to get straight into the command one next coming up. And um, yeah, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you so much.